Victor Hugo's Les Miserables is an epic story. Whether you've been brave enough to tackle the 1,400-page 19th century novel, or heard the Broadway musical, or seen the several screen adaptations of this story, you already know the power of the story. Even though Les Miserables describes just about anything that can be told in a story, our study will dive into six ideas. Grace, justice, poverty, love, revolution, and hope. Each of the main characters in Hugo's story represent a particular idea. And then as we see these characters interact, we can see how these ideas work together, or maybe in spite of each other. For example, Jean Valjean, a redeemed criminal, represents grace, while police inspector Javert represents justice. Les Miserables is a story of what happens when grace and justice collide. As Christians, we talk about God as a God of great love, as well as a God who exhibits justice in the world, but how do grace and justice exist in the same space and time? In John chapter 8, we hear a story of a woman caught in the act of adultery. The crowd presents her before Jesus, and they say that according to the law of Moses, this law demands that we stone her. But what do you say, Jesus? Jesus replies, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And one by one, they begin to walk away. Jesus approaches the woman and asks, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. In this story, we see an amazing grace, Jesus withholding condemnation and giving this woman a new day. But we also see justice because Jesus reminds the crowd that it is not just for the guilty to pass judgment on the guilty, or maybe more accurately, the powerful who have not been held accountable should not pass judgment on the powerless. That is not how God's law should be applied. Our study begins with Jean Valjean, the redeemed criminal who represents the idea of grace. Now, originally, Jean Valjean was arrested for stealing a loaf of bread and sentenced to five years in prison. But because of his multiple attempts to escape, he eventually serves 19 years hard labor. Early in the story, Jean Valjean is bitter, hardened, and thinks being a criminal is his only identity. A priest, Monsieur Bienvenu, takes Jean Valjean into his home after he finds no room in the inn, so to speak. Valjean repays the priest's hospitality by stealing his silver and leaving in the middle of the night. Of course, he is arrested, and the police bring him back to the priest's home to face his accuser. The police are surprised when the priest admits that the silver was a gift. And they, along with Valjean, are astonished when the priest then gives Valjean silver candlesticks as well. The priest thanks the police for doing their job and dismisses them to leave. He then leans into Valjean and tells him that he must use this silver to become a good man. And I love in the musical how the priest sings, I have bought your soul for God. Is this grace? Is this justice? Should the priest turn Valjean into the authorities? In a way, the priest asks Valjean, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? Well, then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This interaction with the priest sets the tone for how Valjean now chooses to look at the world. For Valjean, sometimes experiencing grace and offering goodness in the world necessitates taking great liberties with the rules. For example, Valjean begins living under a pseudonym and becomes a factory owner and mayor of Montreuil. He becomes a great benefactor for the entire city, but it isn't long before his commitment to living an ethical life is tested. Police inspector Javert suspects that Monsieur Le Maire is none other than the criminal Valjean. But Valjean hears that another man has been apprehended and will soon stand trial for being Valjean. What should he do? Should he proclaim the truth and turn himself in? 
should he continue to hide for the sake of those under his care? What would you do? Have you had to make a similar decision? As Christians, we talk about the importance of telling the truth and that the truth will set us free, and that's true, that in Christ the truth will set us free. But keep in mind, the priest withholds the whole truth, and this is what gives Valjean a new life. Should he follow suit for the many or proclaim the truth to save the one falsely accused? He decides to tell the truth, so he stands condemned. These ethical dilemmas happen time and time again throughout the story, and Valjean agonizes over each and every one of them. And this is where the novel and the musical diverge. The musical makes it seem that Valjean is completely redeemed, and he makes good choices all the time, but not so in the novel. It's like the difference between Acts and Galatians in understanding Paul's conversion. In Acts, Paul, this terrible persecutor of Christians, experiences Christ on the road to Damascus and then days later begins to live a new life. In Galatians, however, in Paul's own words, he offers a more nuanced picture of this conversion. He says that after his experience of Christ, he leaves for three years and wrestles with what this experience means as he goes off into Arabia. Although Valjean is convicted by Monsieur Bienvenu, his conversion unfolds for the entirety of the rest of the story. In other words, like an addict approaches sobriety, one day at a time, one healthy decision at a time, Valjean wrestles with his own soul and struggles to choose the good, one healthy choice, one day at a time. The season of Lent is a time of wrestling, in a way. It's a time to prepare ourselves for resurrection. Maybe you've chosen to give something up or take on a new spiritual practice in order to grow in a deeper love of God and neighbor over the 40 days of Lent. If you've ever tried to establish a new habit, you know that it isn't easy. It takes making one choice, one day at a time. There are five great choices that Valjean has to make throughout this story. The first is whether or not to reveal his identity to save the man falsely accused. The second occupies most of our story. Valjean decides to take Fantine's daughter Cosette under his care. We will talk about Fantine in more detail in another session, but Valjean feels responsible for Fantine's death. So in order to make amends, he decides to raise Cosette as his own daughter. Valjean continues to live in hiding in order to give Cosette a comfortable life. And this plan works well until late in the story when there's an uprising in Paris and Valjean joins the revolutionaries at the barricades. At the barricades, we see decision number three. Javert, who has disguised himself as a revolutionary, is discovered, and Valjean is ordered to execute him. Much like allowing the man who the police thought was Valjean to go to prison would afford Valjean freedom, killing Javert would also afford Valjean a freedom he has never known. But again, Valjean chooses mercy and grace. He fires his gun into the air and he lets Javert go free. Then we see Valjean's fourth ethical dilemma. Marius, Cosette's love interest, is wounded during the skirmish. Valjean holds a hatred for Marius because he wants to take Cosette away, and Cosette is the only person Valjean has grown to love. He could let Marius die as a casualty of war and keep Cosette at home. But again, Valjean chooses grace. He drags Marius to safety through the darkness of the Paris sewers. And this darkness serves as a symbol of Christ carrying the cross. There's no light. He must feel his way through the darkness, through humanity's excrement, and there seems to be little hope. Yet Valjean keeps walking. Marius survives, and Valjean eventually says goodbye to Cosette. There's one final test though. In order for Marius and Cosette to be married, Valjean must reveal his true identity. He chooses to confess to Marius, but he only confesses his faults and failures. 
So is this a true confession? Only giving word to our shortcomings isn't altogether honest. It's not the full picture of who we are. The final test is for Valjean to recognize that he is, in fact, a good man. This is something that he's either forgotten or he's never known. By the end of the story, Valjean's full identity is revealed and he dies finally knowing peace. Five moments. Confession, responsibility, mercy, sacrifice, and truth. What are your five moments? Can you name those handful of moments in your life that have shaped your identity and your story? Maybe they were good decisions that produced great fruit. Or maybe these were moments you would rather forget and hope everyone else forgets as well. The good news is that Christ is always with us. Like Valjean would remember the priest during these moments in his story, we are called to remember Christ, to remember the amazing grace, to remember a righteous justice, and to remember that we are all God's children. May all of our moments reveal the amazing grace of God.